Let's have our confession this morning. Get your Bible. Hold it up. Praise God. So I thank God today for the Word of God. Today, I will be taught the uncompromised, the unchanging, the infallible, indestructible seed of the Word of God. For I am who God says I am, and I can do what God says I can do, and I can have what God says I can have. This Bible is God's holy word speaking to me. And look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Bible is God's holy word speaking to you. So smile real big, go ahead and get excited, wave the word around us. Thank God for the word, amen. All right, you may be seated in his presence. Will you bring me a couple of napkins up here? Just a couple. Thank you. I left my handkerchief at the house this morning. In case I start crying, I have some of this. <laughs> Christmas. What a season. And what a time to be alive. And we have a wonderful Jesus. Look at somebody say, I have a wonderful Jesus. He meets my every need. Amen. The perfect gift, I've named my message this morning. I've changed it about three times already. But I'm going to call it the perfect gift. You know, everybody's looking for that one perfect gift for somebody you love the most or care about the most. And you'll search everywhere looking for it. And if a store had it and they sold it out, you say, if one comes in, give me a call. Here's my number. And so we're always looking for that particular gift that we can give somebody that we care about. Amen. But Jesus is the perfect gift. And we find that wise men seek Jesus. Wise men or wise people seek the Lord. John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world, he loved the world that he gave. The greatest gift is only begotten Son. If we believe, we could have eternal life. And so we have, as a child of God, the perfect gift. And if you don't have that perfect gift, you watching live on stream today or anyone in the house of God today, if you don't have that perfect gift, it's very easy to receive it. Right. Just believe that Jesus died for you 2,000 years ago. And on the third day, he arose from the grave. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bible to Luke's gospel this morning. I'm going to go back and forth between Luke and Matthew this morning. And I want to explain to you or share with you this morning, for you that don't know or maybe you're kind of confused about it, the difference between wise men and shepherds. We've got them all mixed up, all mixed up. The shepherds didn't bring gifts, and they were the first ones to see Jesus. A little almost two years later, that's when the wise men came and brought the gifts. And so we want to kind of show you through Scripture this morning what we're talking about today. So let's begin in Luke's Gospel, Chapter 2. And I thought this was very interesting when I searched one word out here. I'll get to it in just a minute. He says in verse 7, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swallowing clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. A manger is a feeding trough. That's right. Laid him in a feeding trough. Now, do you know what swallowing clothes is? 
If you don't know what swallowing clothes is, I'm going to explain it to you. When they wrapped him in swallowing clothes, they wrapped him in strips of cloth. The same thing they did to Jesus at his death. Wrapped him in strips of cloth. And so what happened is, this is what we call burial cloth. Swallowing cloth. We say, why would they put swallowing cloth, burial cloth, at his birth? Because he was born to die. He was born to bring you and I eternal life. And swallowing clothes is death clothes. For a man has been designed to die for mankind. Remember what Jesus said in the garden against sent me? He said, Lord, can this pass? Is there another way? Is there any other way? But I'll go your way. Because he knew what was ahead of him. But what got him through that, the scripture says, he looked beyond the cross, beyond the cross, and saw the other side of it. And when we're going through something, we need to look beyond that. Amen. Because it don't stay dark 24 7. As I said last week, the sun is always shining. Look at your neighbor and say, the sun is always shining. Thank God for that. And it's only a cloud separating the darkness from the light, just a cloud. It reminded me this morning we were coming across the bridge. It was real foggy when we first got on the bridge. So we saw the fog, we had to slow down some. But when we got over halfway through, we pulled right out of the fog, got clear, clear as a bell. I was able to speed back up. That's like when we're going through things, going through a fog. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, things clear right up. It gets bright. And that would cause me to speed up a little bit. Not to break the speed limit. Close sometime. But I could go faster. At first, I could go about 40, 45 miles an hour. But then I got back to the 55 and 60. Just think, it just didn't take, it seemed like five minutes. And when we go through things, it's not as long as you think it is. It just seems long when you're going through it. But if you look by faith beyond the cloud, beyond the storm, whatever you're going through, you'll always be a winner. I said, we'll always be a winner. As long as you know Jesus, you'll always win. See, I read the end of the book. I read the end of the book. See, sometimes people get too anxious. They like to go through, when they're reading a novel or some type of book or whatever, they like to go to the end and find out what happened. I've gone to the end of this book several times, and we win. We are winners. Look at somebody and say, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. So they wrapped him in swallowing clothes. And for a long time, I didn't know what swallowing clothes was. Then what I found out as I studied and realized they buried him in death cloth because he was born to die. Back at verse 8 here says, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. What are they? Shepherds? Everybody say shepherds. shepherds. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone all around them. They were greatly afraid. And the angel said to them, don't be afraid. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to some people. Will be to all people. Not just joy, but great joy. Great joy. I hope, well, I pray that you're rejoicing with enthusiasm knowing who Christ is in you today. Verse 11 says, For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, 
a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You'll find the babe wrapped in swollen clothes. There we go again. Swollen clothes. Lying in a feeding trough. And suddenly, and suddenly there was with me angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. On earth, peace. Everybody say peace. peace. Goodwill towards men. See, we can have peace in the midst of our darkest hour because we know who he is. He says, peace, glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Now let's go back over here to Matthew's gospel. Matthew's gospel chapter 2. We're going to pick up here in verse 7, which Jesus is about two years older. Now the first part uh, Matthew chapter 1 talks about his birth again. Luke deals with the Gentiles. Matthew deals with the Jews. And uh, before I forget, I want to remind you that the wise men were Gentiles, May guys. They were Gentiles. Keep that in mind. So Gentiles were ministering gifts to the Lord Jesus Christ. So it said here in verse 7, Matthew chapter 2, Jesus now is about two years old. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them that the time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, search carefully for the young child. Not a baby, a young child. When you have found him, bring him back to me, bring word to me, and I'll come and worship him. That's a lie. God knew that was a lie. It didn't notice, notice here. And when they heard the king, they departed. Behold, the star which they had seen in the east, in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Now, these are the wise men. Remember, there's, uh, there's the shepherds that saw it. It was at the birth. The, the, uh, the wise men are here at two years old. And when they had come into the house, notice here, when they come into the house, not a stable, two years later, they came into a house. They saw the young child with Mary to his mother. They fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, not treasure, treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now listen to me. A gift, gold is a gift for king. And let me clarify something right now. Jesus was not a poor man. Well, didn't he have to work being a carpenter? No, I think it was a hobby. You'll find out later on when I get to where I need to get to. Jesus was a wealthy, look at somebody, Jesus was a wealthy man. He was not a poor man. We've got, sometimes we get a, a vision of Jesus being poor and just barely making it in life when he was on the earth for 33 and a half years. But he was a wealthy man, a wealthy man. Matter of fact, at the cross, the soldiers gambled for his robe. You don't gamble for, for rags. It had to be some value to it for the soldiers would gamble and see who's going to get that robe. So it says here, and when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. They fell down and worshiped him. When they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Say that with me, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I was, uh, happened to be watching a news channel yesterday, morning early, briefly. I like to be on, I like the old westerns. So I get up on Saturday mornings, Hop Along Cassidy comes on. <laughs> Some of you probably don't even know who he is, but 
That was, he was one of my favorites growing up as a child, a young boy. But I, I like watching him on Saturday mornings at 8 o'clock. And so I, uh, right before I watched him, I had turned it over onto a news channel. And they were asking questions on the street. Can you name the three spices or the free gifts that was brought to Jesus? One man said sandals, <laughs> bread. He said something else. I don't know. They, when he said sandals, that threw me off right there. <laughs> you would, they asked several people, what, what, what did they bring to him? And they, not, not, one, one, one or two people finally got it right. It's, it's so sad how ignorant people in the United States is concerning Jesus. It's on, we've got radio, television, worldwide teaching about Christ. So that tells me there are so many people in our country that don't know a thing about Jesus. Don't know a thing about Jesus. They don't even wonder why they want to take Jesus, they want to take the name Jesus out of schools. They want to take it away from you. They don't want you, they don't want you saying Merry Christmas. Amen. 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 Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Praise God. They don't know. People, they're ignorant. We need to, we need to ask God to use us. Where we're at, our location in life, we can't reach the whole world, but we can reach our world where we're at. Right. Let God use us to be a witness to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is coming soon. Yes. And there are so many people ignorant, so many people ignorant of the coming of the Lord. I'm going to be honest with you this morning. Can I be honest with you? I will not send my child this day and time to a college. I will send them to a local college where I'll keep my eye on them. <laughs> most of the time, I didn't, I didn't realize this just a few years ago, that when they go to college, they, they don't, nobody has to, they go when they want to. They, they go, they, they, they're not disciplined enough to go. They stay home they want to. And a lot of kids just want to go so they get away from mom and daddy. See, a lot of times people, young people don't like rules. But Jesus always laid out rules. He said, if you obey. If you obey, you shall be blessed in the city, blessed in the field. If you obey. So we get down here where they worship him at the house. We brought gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It then said they were divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed for their own country another way. The, the money arrived just in time for Jesus to take that trip to Egypt. Because he had to get out of there because God warned his mom and daddy, take him out of here because Herod is going to kill every child two years and young. You know, God's always on time. Yes. <laughs> always on time. Notice he didn't bring it when he was a child. He didn't let the separate bring any money to him. They might have dropped off the nickel or something. I don't know. But the wise men brought all these gifts. As I said a moment ago, gold is a gift for a king. Frankincense is a gift for God. Myrrh is a gift for man. He was also the son of man and the son of God. 100% man and 100% God. Amen. Myrrh was like perfume. And also myrrh was designed to put on the body of Jesus when they crucified him and buried him in the tomb. They put myrrh on his body. A scent that would make him smell good. That's the same thing they received when Jesus
was two years old when the wise men brought in myrrh and they put myrrh back on Jesus' death clothes again when he was two years old, a baby, I mean, when he was a child. See, God got everything planned out perfect. And if you'll follow his plan, you're going to be all right. We get distracted so many times, but we need to stay on track and follow his plan. Amen. So when you follow the plan of God, you'll be blessed. So we see here, let's go back over here to, uh, let me go to Isaiah chapter 6, 60. Let me show you something. Isaiah chapter 60. Thank God for the word. Amen. I said, thank God for the word. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 5 says, Then you shall see become radiant. Your heart shall swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. Talking about the sea here represents people. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. Notice verse 6. The multitude of camels shall cover the land. Your dromedaries, Armenia, Ephraim, which are, these are one humpback camels. Those from Sheba shall come. Talk about the wise men now. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall proclaim the praises of the Lord. The praises of the Lord. I just want to show you these camels with one humpback. And, you know, they always, wise men, when they went to a city, everybody knew them. They go in caravans. Caravans. It wasn't just three wise men. It might have been three shepherds, but it wasn't three wise men. Wise men always traveled with, with groups of people had their own soldiers. And when, you, when they came, they came in with like an army when they went into a town. And that's who showed up in the house of Jesus when he was two years old. Let's go to Psalm 72. Psalm 72. I'm just laying out some information for you to do you this morning. Sort of mess up some of your Christmas stories. <clears throat> Psalm seventy-two, verse ten said, "The king of Tar the kings of Tarsus and of the Isles will bring presents. The kings of Sheba, Seba, will offer gifts. Yes, all kings shall fall down before him." All the things of the east are coming to him. Not just a few, but all the kings that's coming to the house where Jesus is. All nations shall serve him. And in verse 5, 15 it says, And he shall live, and the gold of Sheba will be given to him. Prayer also will be made for him continually and daily. He shall be praised. Get a piece of this now whole army of caravans of wise men, magis, coming to the house of Jesus. They're bringing all this gifts, all this gold, all this myrrh, all this frankincense, bringing it to Jesus. He was not a poor man. Somebody said, he was not a poor man. I thank God he was not a poor man. So when he tells us, he said, Beloved, I pray and worship of all things that you prosper and be in good health and your soul and your mind prosper. Yeah. So you've got to understand God wants you to prosper. Yeah. He wants you to be blessed in every area of your life. And so let's go back over here to uh, Matthew. Say, God wants me blessed. Say it again. God Let's look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 here first. It says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah in the days of Herod the king, behold, 
wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? How do they know that? That I hadn't figured out yet. But God got a way of getting things to you that you can't explain. Amen. He, he got away. He said, well, how's God going to fix this? Oh, he knows how to fix it. How did God get, how, how am I going to get this situation or that? Says, God take care of it. You don't have to know how. You just got to know the one that's going to take care of it. And a lot of times we fret and stress ourselves out over how are things going to work out. You just need to just relax and trust the Holy Ghost. Trust God. God is real. The Holy Ghost is real. He is a miracle working God. He'll work miracles for you. Don't be sad maybe because you don't have enough money to buy everybody you know gifts. I don't have the money to buy everybody I know gifts either. But it's not about gifts. It's about who we are celebrating. The perfect gift. When you have the perfect gift, so bring me my water up here, please. Water's already open. There you go. Thank you, sir. Terry, he's the nicest guy. <laughs> when you have the perfect gift, which is the Word of God, the perfect gift, and you can unwrap this gift and get it whatever you need. 66 boxes filled with perfect gifts. 66 boxes filled with perfect gifts. And all we got to do is just get in these, one, just one of these boxes. Just get in one of these boxes. If I could just get you to get in one of these boxes, Amen. it'll change your life. Amen. It'll dress you like you've never been dressed before. Amen. You'll talk like you never talked before. Amen. You act like you never acted before. Amen. That's always better. Amen. Your talking's always better. Amen. Your living is always better. Amen. Your dressing is always better. Amen. Your lifestyle is always better. Amen. Everything is better when you unwrap some of the perfect gifts that God has for you. Amen. Thank God for the perfect gift. Amen. Just keep unwrapping. Just keep unwrapping. Yes. It's not just reading. It's really meditating as you go along. When I'm reading the Word of God, I go through, I always pray, God, show me something in here. I'll get to a certain scripture and I'll read it. I'll say, I know I've read it a hundred times, but it just looks different today. Amen. Praise God. We get gifts from each other, family members, friends, so forth. We'll unwrap it, look at it. Oh, this is so beautiful. Thank you. It's a wonderful present, wonderful gift. And when it's closed and you're thinking back in your mind, I sure hope this fits. <laughs> I sure hope this fits so I don't have to take it back. But we have all these gifts, the perfect gift, right at our disposal in all times. The word of the living God. Amen. Don't ever forget where your source is. Don't ever let distraction take you away from the things of God. I've been serving God almost 50 years. I've had all kinds of opportunities to be distracted, to pull away and go the wrong direction. But you've got to know who God is and say no to distractions because the devil's out to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus, somebody said Jesus, Jesus. will bring life and bring it more abundantly. 
The word life there means Zoe. It means life as God has it. That perfect gift lives on the inside of us. We have that perfect gift, the Holy Spirit, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords living on the inside of us. The greatest gift, the perfect gift is always in here. Don't ever say, I didn't get anything. It's not about outward gifts. It's about the inward gift that you now have. It's Jesus Christ. That's the most satisfying gift you'll ever receive. You ever notice kids when they get presents, they throw the toy to the side and play with the box? <laughs> I heard somebody say one time, I'm just going to buy a bunch of boxes and bring them to the house. <laughs> but Jesus is the perfect gift. He lives on the inside of us. I look over my life. I look to the now and I look to the future. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. It matters not what you've been dealing with or dealt with. Jesus still loves you. He'll love you when nobody else will love you. He'll be there in the midnight hour. He'll always be there for you regardless. People can leave you, but Jesus says, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. You got you got a person named Jesus that says, I'll be with you through thick and thin. All the time I'll be with you. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. And we see where the wise men brought gifts. We have it in our stories and in our plays all over the world. We have the wise men playing the part of the shepherd. And so, but that's not true. The shepherds are the one that went to Jesus when he was born. And the star, they said that star, there's been many things been said about a star. They said it would move and they moved with it. But you know, as I meditate on that, how the star would move and stand still, they see it right. I believe it was an angel. A messenger, not just a star, but a messenger who could be called a star. But he brought forth the wise men. He brought forth also the shepherds, led him out of the fields, the shepherd by night, right where Jesus was. See, there's people out there that God's speaking to you right now that's speaking to them about being a blessing to you. Maybe he's talking to your boss to give you a raise. And sometimes they get hard-headed and don't pay attention. I don't care if they're a sinner or not. God can instruct sinners to be a blessing to you. Don't ever give up because, well, my boss man ain't saved. It don't make no difference. God can use it. If he can use a donkey, if he can use a rooster, he can use an unsaved man or woman to be a blessing to you. Amen. Amen. I've had people over the years come and they have blessed me certain ways that it had to be God. It had to be God. No other way it could be. God has this thing orchestrated. And if we'll get into one of the gifts, one of the presents in the Bible, open it up, follow the instructions, you're going to have the best year you've ever had. Amen. I believe if, you, if you'll obey the Word of God, and if you made mistakes this year, you need to repent, seriously repent. Get it behind you, because the devil is trying to take you out. He's trying to take you out. He wants to take you out. But God don't hold anything against you. If you'll repent, get it right, next year can be a great year for you. 2020, strong. I like what my son, Phil Jr., said. 2020 is strong. 
And we're going to be stronger in 2020 than we've ever been in our life. Amen. Amen. So the shepherds were the ones that was at the birth of Christ. And the wise men came two years later, brought all the gold. Can you imagine all the kings bringing gold? We got, we, we see our plays, our productions and so forth. Got a little box representing the gold. When you read the Bible and understand they, they went into caravans, wise men would be in caravans. It says all the kings of the east will come. All the Gentile kings will come bringing gifts. They named three Pacific gifts. But gold, each one probably brought, they had probably boxes of gold, myrrh, frankincense, Frankincense and myrrh were very expensive. You could sell that, make a lot of money on it. But he brought the gifts. Loaded Jesus down. Jesus didn't have to work as a tarpenter boy. He took care of his own family. Amen. You see, when Jesus started traveling, his traveling ministry, he took care of his disciples either supernaturally or naturally he took care of them. Whatever they needed, he took care of them. We are followers of Christ, just like the disciples. We should understand when we got born again, we become disciples of Christ. And Christ will take care of us if we'll keep him foremost in our life. Let him be number one. Jesus should be number one. Look at your name. Says Jesus, Jesus should be number one in your life. See, everything failed. That's why Jesus had to be sent. Adam and Eve fell. Prophets fell. They couldn't do what Jesus could do. The moment Adam and Eve were kicked out of the garden, in Genesis three fifteen. He said, I'll bruise Satan's head. Thank God today. God had a plan. I said that to say this. Whatever you've been going through, whatever's happened, if you follow him, he's got a plan. He's got a plan. You don't have to know the plan. You just follow the plan as it unfolds itself as you get into the gifts that God has for you through the Word of God. Because in my own life, as I look back, my wife and I have discussed it many times. It's a miracle where we are today. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. I know as a sinner, God protected me. He protected me when I was a sinner. I, I know that without a shadow of a doubt. I've been shot at. My car was hit, had about that far from my head. The bullet hit the side of the car and it was coming right there to the top of the car, right there to the dent made in the car. I could have been gone. That's just one occasion. But see, I put myself in those positions that I shouldn't have been in. But God always had his hand on me. Always had his hand on us. See, God just didn't save you. He was, he was nudging you to serve him the day you became old enough to know right from wrong. And that is not 12 years old. Because I know some people 30 years old still don't know right from wrong. But I had people in my family I didn't even know. Cousins, great aunts, and so forth, praying. They come by. Well, I'll never forget one day, two ladies came by the house. I was like 15 years old. 
me and my buddy, we just stopped by the house for a minute. We ran in the house. I had to get something. I get ready to run it. Mom said, wait a minute. I want you to introduce to, you, to you, some of your family here. When I was 15 years old, I didn't care about being introduced to them. <laughs> These ladies was in there probably 50s or 60s. Mom said, the whole, you're not going out until you, till I introduce you now. These are your family members. I said, okay, Mama. So I went in there and she introduced me. I said, Mama, I got to go. <laughs> One of the ladies spoke up. She said, come here, young man. She said, come here. I walked up to her. She put her hand on my head. She prayed for me to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. That one day I will serve God. I'll never forget that as long as I live. 15 years old. And I've had several instances after that that would happen to me. Family members I didn't even know, people I didn't even know would pray for me. They put people inside our house when we were first married that knew the Lord took care of us. God is so good. Amen. So God will take care of you Amen. if you'll trust him. Amen. Lean not to your own understanding. Right. Trust the Lord with all your heart. <coughs> He'll bless you. Amen. Amen. You don't never know. God might have a king coming your way. Amen. You already got one in, living inside of you. I'm talking about a wise man bringing something to you. But if you don't, don't worry about it. God will still take care of you. Right. Amen. Right. 